Hello, it's Mike Levin on Wednesday, July 6, around 5.40 a.m. 2016. <clears throat> Heading into the office early to get a little work done that you might say I've been procrastinating with, but you also might say that I've been letting my subconscious sort of uh, work on the problem. Uh, it's one of the larger problems in my industry, my industry being search engine optimization, which is a unfortunate name for, an, I guess, what is kind of an awesome, potentially awesome field. Uh, but it is kind of like a tool or a weapon, and it is whatever you make of it. So, the way it works is you're consuming media right now as you watch me. And there's a couple of models for anything like media, which is a product you're just buying or consuming or, you know, digesting into your uh, mind and awareness. Uh, product made by someone else and the two prevailing models are that such media is either subsidized by advertising so advertisers pay to bring you that programming and in exchange they expect a little bit of their message to be slipped in there so that you consume it and you get programmed buy it right along with the programming. I am just starting to explain to my daughter, who's uh, about five and a half and just old enough to understand each things, why what you watch on TV is called programs and that it's programming and that it is media and media is programming and media does programming and part of her growing up right along with the lessons that are being taught to her by her mom and dad and the immediate physical world around her are the lessons that are being fed into her in a very efficient fashion in a highly artistically crafted media consumption mm, fire hose uh, that it has to be counted in there as one of the things that's kind of there helping to develop her mind into an individual and a person. So she knows that daddy is a programmer. She has more than once called me that coding guy which is like totally awesome and uh, I hope to encourage that that image she has of me but now I have to step up and make it work. Hey, this is an experiment. Um, I've been noticing that the algorithm that chooses the thumbnail for YouTube is taking on quite an interesting sense of humor. So when you do things like that, it is going to zero in on that as one of the candidate images for the algorithm. I'm not exactly sure what it is, but it has to do, I think, with index frames. When enough changes in the frame that it would be a lot more information than normal MPEG or other encodings uh, would compress it down to, it's a good candidate for a thumbnail image because that's a pretty good indication something just happened and blend in a little facial recognition and uh, a few rules like if the hand plus the face are in the frame that's probably a good candidate for a thumbnail image so I guess I've done a few different tries right there and it'll be really a lot of fun to watch to see which picture uh, YouTube chooses when I upload this so, I'm just about ready to hop on the train and I want to get a few words in about the aspect of my business that made me want to start this video, but already I'm running out of time because of these uh, tangents I go on, but they're cool tangents. They're what I want to make videos about. Um, starting to observe the use of 
machine learning uh, around us uh, in everyday life. And this is one of the places I've been noticing it, how YouTube creates these thumbnail images. Okay, so my field, um, I am being tasked to help rework the menus, the drop-down menus, the navigational devices of one of my employer's websites as uh, part of my job. Just make recommendations and to help the designers. And uh, I am going with a strategy that puts forth the shape of the site that should exist. Now, sites always have had shape, but the shape has not been all that critical in the past because long tail search hits worked so well. In other words, if you published a page and it addressed a particular word combination in an exact word usage order, and someone searched on that exact word usage, for lack of any better page on the internet, that one would be served. So lots of pages were created using that premise, and uh, those days are over. A series of uh, algorithm tweaks or uh, measures taken against spammers, call it what you will. It's, everyone loves to say it's an alg tweak, but really it's a whole system. Uh, it's a system of systems that results in search results. And it's hard to tell at what level the adjustments was, have been made, the way the original data is indexed. I mean, that would be major. Um, but often more likely, the original data feed is, remains the same, the raw data pool, the data that's collected from the web crawler. And what changes is the way it's processed. And uh, uh, that first pass processing is probably pretty important because it distills it down to something for a second phase pass where you make those really important decisions like how much full text search is possible, uh, how do you choose what is most likely the primary targeted uh, keyword arrangement, and uh, you know various other data points about the page that are important to save uh, in a sort of discrete format uh, so that it's not a uh, massive amount of data that needs to be searched every time you type something into Google. The idea is to distill it down so that it's all in memory uh, over on the server side and no matter what query you put in, the best most relevant results are returned. That means our job is to get into that small distilled set of pages and keyword alignments that Google deems as important. And it looks at signals that determine this. And one of those signals is very much tied to your main uh, website navigational devices, your drop down menus and such, because the publisher is saying these pages are important. And in a world where the great spammy masses of long tail targeted pages have suddenly lost their influence and effect, the remaining pages are the ones that are being rewarded with probably more than their fair share of traffic, but that's because we're in a cleanup phase and Google is going extreme in the anti long tail direction and we have to adapt to that world. We have to clean up our sites and we have to make fewer number of overall pages and make each one of those pages count for more and be an excellent user experience and therefore we go full circle and the definition of what an SEO is evolves yet again moving away from the technical the technical areas in which you can trick Google and is moving more towards let's call it being a lawyer or attorney fighting a case in front of a jury of your peers. Your peers all, for the most part, being Google systems that are automatically making editorial calls and continue to be the great arbitrators of uh, website search traffic on the planet until things change in some dramatic way, which given Google's really smart moves, uh, probably is not going to happen anytime soon, so we might be in a world of all kinds of different specialized niche searches, but the general web search remains Google, and the Google game continues, and it's really worth 
um, rolling with a redefinition of this field because it's still worth being an SEO. It's more worth it than ever, I would say, because now we have to make a good, strong case to a good, strong judge and hopping on the train. Thanks for joining me. Hope to see you again soon. Don't forget to subscribe.